guys, this is Jillian of Wigglefish Studio and in today's video I am working with inks, more specifically Bombay India inks for the colored bits and uh, a HG Martin metallic ink for the silver highlights that appear later on. Um, it was really fun to work on this piece with the intent of focusing mainly on practicing gradients and getting those vibrant colors and just getting more familiar with using inks. Um, and the result that comes out is something that makes me really want to keep working with inks in the future. It was really nice to work with something that you could get vibrant tones very quickly and with very few layers. And it was also really easy to spread out and get those gradients that I was looking for. Uh, with the background, I wanted to make sure that I had enough little details to add interest to the piece. Um, and really bring an air of opulence, I guess, with this, you know, image of a, a noble woman at a ball or something like that. The jewel tones are something that I really wanted to focus on. So having gems in every area of the painting as much as possible was something I really wanted to go for. The idea of a curtain background is something that I also really want to do for this piece, just because you have that opportunity to have the folds in the cloth, see how the uh, material reacts to light and all that good stuff. Um, also having a nice strip of black where the two curtains meet, as you'll see here in a minute, um, really gives the illusion that there's more to the background without having to do a really expansive background, um, which for a piece that was kind of quick and just meant to experiment with a new painting material, I thought would be a good compromise to a full-fledged background. In hindsight, I wish I had done fewer lines to indicate the folds of the curtain, um, with line art alone and really relied more on the ink for that and that's something I'll definitely keep in mind in the future. One of the most satisfying parts of working with a painting with defined line art is just being able to erase that sketch underneath and just seeing the line art and seeing it crisp and clean and it's always a really fun part of the painting process for me. Now here I'm going to be going in with Miskit which is a masking fluid and this is the first time I've used it and it's really, really useful. Um, basically what you do is you go in with this orange liquid and you paint over areas of the piece that you don't want to have any paint on yet. Um, so I went around on the figure and just made sure that when I paint the large washes of background, she wouldn't get covered up with those inks. Um, so you can sort of see it going on here with this orange color. I believe it's a rubber based masking fluid, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, I've also seen some reviews online that talk about leaving it on overnight and the orange dye actually staining the paper. Um, so I'd be cautious with, about that if you do use it. I haven't come across those problems yet, but in this piece in particular, I used it very quickly over the span of just a couple hours. Uh, the great thing about it is that it also can go on on these itty bitty teeny tiny places like the uh, rings on the curtain here holding up those gems. Now how you remove it afterwards is you can actually go in with either your fingers or an eraser and I'll show you more of that later on in this video. One of the great things about ink is that it's very cost effective in a way just because you're able to go in with just a few drops of it and really get the nice pigment to the water. Um, you can see me working with the palette there to the side and when it goes on it's already a pretty nice purple, uh, fairly vibrant and pigmented. It's also really useful to have brushes that are meant for water-based paints like watercolors or inks. Past I've tried to use just brushes that were meant for acrylics and more dry mediums and it is just so useful. Um, I'm still kind of reliant on the water dropper. Maybe it's just a force of habit um, but the amount of water that these rounded tip brushes carry is really great for pieces like this and super convenient. You can sort of see how easy it was to blend out those tops and sides and have a sort of crisp line on one side but blend it out on the other. Um, I'm very new to traditional media so being able to get that clean line and getting that gradient and that shading effect uh, without a whole lot of uh, heartache uh, was really amazing and something that definitely urges me to continue using inks.
Here I am going in with a blue uh, color just to add a little more depth to that top curtain and add out those uh, that shading. You can see how vibrant the ink goes on in that top right corner. Now again with this piece I really wanted to focus on gradients and getting more washes of color evenly distributed and making it more intricate I guess in just how deep the, the color goes. Here you see me removing the misket, uh, which is a weirdly satisfying process. I'm able to go in with my fingernail and get some of the large chunks off, but really an eraser is so useful in removing it. I found that it's really useful to put the misket on with a decent thickness, not too thick and gloppy, but enough that when you go to peel it off, it won't break every time. Uh, the areas that I put it on very thin were kind of a pain to remove. But still overall, I think it's a very useful tool and worth using, at least for pieces like this. I love the green tones in the inks. I think they're just so gorgeous. You're able to get that deep gem tone and really use it to the most of its potential. Layering depth on the gown and having that highlighted area or less uh, shaded area, I guess, was also really fun. And later I'll go in to add uh, gel pen to really make it highlighted and sort of emphasize that silky texture. You can see how well the, the ink took to having that gradient with the blue over the green. Something I was really surprised with. I also wanted to make sure to add a green reflection onto the curtains behind her just to make it seem like she was a little more integrated into her environment even though it's not a very environment or background rich image. Now having the blue stole or sort of shrug, um, I wasn't sure about it first because I kind of wanted to make it green but at the same time I didn't want the green to be too overpowering uh, just since there's not a ton of green incorporated into the background. So I wanted to make sure the colors were a little more comprehensive. But again, the ink just surprised me with how well you could blend, get gradients, get some shading in there. And in the recording, um, you can't quite see how vibrant the greens and blues are. But once you see the scanned image at the end, uh, you'll see just how bright those jewel tones were able to come out. Another thing that I was worried about this piece was the line heavy nature of the hair. Um, I was worried I wouldn't be able to get a lot of color through there, but it really shone through. And another thing that really helps with line heavy parts of an illustration like this is just going in with gel pen at the end and being able to add those little highlights at a little more depth, a little more interest and breaks up the busy nature of those lines. Going in and adding blush around the elbows and shoulders and nose and lips and all that stuff where blood is near the surface of the skin uh, is always really fun and I think adds just another level of detail that isn't a lot of effort but brings a little more interest to the piece. The metallic inks were something that were really fun to work with and add on this piece. Um, aside from her skin tone, there wasn't anything very bright that could break up the, uh, the really rich tones that kind of pull down the brightness value, I guess, of the image. Um, and adding those details of silver on the shrug, on the curtains overhead, and the jewelry um, just really lightened it up quite a bit. It's also really fun to add metallic details to a painting just because you have that sort of kinetic shift it back and forth and see all the all the shimmer and how it hits in different lights and it just makes the piece more tactile I guess. Here 
here I am going in with the gel pen and adding those highlights uh, as well as to the hair I've also added some to the nose and lips and a little bit to the eyes um, as well as to the dress to really enhance that silky texture gel pens have really become invaluable to me in the traditional work I do which is really surprising as it's a material I generally associate with like middle school doodles and stuff but very useful after adding that metallic ink, it's also really good to go back in with a pen and really finish up those lines and double check to make sure it didn't cover anything up just because it's so opaque. All right, well, that's it for this video. I'm really happy with how the result turned out and the work I was able to put in on gradients and just getting those vibrant colors. I definitely look forward to using inks in the future. Um, so I hope you liked it. So feel free to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Have a good one.